if I built her this thing and it cracks and snaps in half, I'm gonna feel horrible. That would be the worst gift ever. We've all heard of girl math and we've all heard of boy math, but have we considered maker math? We got this, guys. We got this, right? The chance of her getting sawdust in her cup is very high. And thank you to Instax for sponsoring this video. Hi guys, welcome back. Today is an exciting video because all four of us are here and we're gonna be DIYing together. We're gonna be showing you guys some last minute gift ideas, but we're gonna be making them for each other. We are only gonna have two days to complete these DIYs with a budget of $50 and we are going to exchange gifts at the end of the video. Okay, how are we gonna decide who's getting who though? I actually have an idea on how to draw names. Can you help me though? Yeah. Okay, so my idea is that we can use the Instax Mini Link 2 smartphone printer to print out photos of our faces and put them in the bowl. Oh, that's so cute, because then we can use these as the tags for the gifts when we're done wrapping them. Done. So this smartphone printer connects to a free downloadable app on your phone, and then from there there's a variety of fun modes, like collage layouts, sketch feature, customizable frames. But today, I think we're just gonna go with the simple print. The Instax Mini Link 2 also comes with the Instax Air feature, which means that you can draw shapes and messages in the air while taking the photo, and then that's applied directly onto the printed image. The Instax Mini Link 2 printer gives you lots of options to personalize those special moments. Okay, should we draw some names? Yes. Okay, so I have received our resident fashionista, Rachel. I'm thinking of two different ideas. There's one puffer jacket to puffer vest DIY that I've always wanted to do, like an oversized colorful puffer I think would be right up her alley. Or she's also a knit friendly girl. She loves a knit. So I'm picturing like a knit sweater with some kind of embroidery element. I think I'm gonna go to the thrift store and just see what's there and let that inspire me to which direction I should go. Just a little too small. This is a Rachel color, but I don't know about the cut for what I need to do. Okay, this just might be part of Rachel's gift anyways. I feel like it's so her. Also, it's beautiful. Add to cart. Okay, I think I actually got pretty lucky with my selection of Becky for this gift exchange. Not only does she have a pretty clear style when it comes to home decor, but she's also not shy about sharing pictures and videos that she finds of home decor that she thinks is really cool. So, I have seen her talk about this particular wine rack, and she does enjoy a nice glass of wine, so I think it looks like something that we could achieve and hopefully, what we need is gonna be in the store behind me, but it's always an exciting time, so I'm gonna head in there and see if they've got what we need. Excuse me, is that, is that the price? Good grief. That's so cool. What the heck is this? Purple heart, guys. $432, that is not, not as much as I anticipated for a piece of this size. They make wooden tiles. Oh, that is so freaking cool.
Rochelle has this Stanley cup that she carries around all the time. And because she has so many gadgets and gizmos, I thought it would be a really good idea to make her like a personalized Stanley kit. You know, something that could be useful on the cup itself further than just keeping you hydrated. Like put a pouch on it and maybe like a little keychain and a strap or something. Where is she gonna keep her AirPods? In the kit. To move forward, I think it would be wise to head to the thrift store, see if I can find anything to achieve this. Okay, had some success at the thrift store, I think. Ideally would have found a purple pouch because she loves purple and her cup right now is like this light purple color, but I did find this one. And it has some deep purple with the blue, which I think she'll like. And then I also picked up some beads. Now, Rochelle isn't necessarily one to adorn her items, but I really wanna be able to like tie it all together and make it look like a full set. So I did find these beads some nice dark purple ones. And then because she loves woodworking so much, I thought it would be nice to add some like wooden beads. To attach this, I think I'm gonna have to grab some elastic band. So I'll go pick that up from the fabric store, maybe some Velcro also. And then I wanna check out this small business that is downtown that sells glass straws. Cause I think it would be nice to just include it in the package, so. Now, the last thing I wanna get might not be as relatable for everyone, but because Rochelle does so much woodworking, the chance of her getting sawdust in her cup is very high. So I thought it would be really nice to actually get our little silicone cap that will go on top of the straw. Now I couldn't really think of a store where I could find something like this, so I did order some and those will be arriving tomorrow, but I do think Rochelle will really appreciate the thought. So I'm gonna wait for those and we'll continue working on this tomorrow. Okay, so I pulled Kelsey and I've been thinking a lot about this. One thing I know about her is that I know she loves to travel. She did a big trip earlier this year where she went away for an entire month. I have seen these luggage stands in pretty much every hotel I've ever been to, but I don't know if anyone actually owns them in their house and why not? Just as they are useful to unpack when you're at the hotel, they'd be useful at home to unpack when you get back home. So in the spirit of gifting her something practical while also being great for the travel friend, I think I'm gonna go with a DIY luggage stand for her house. Now the design for a standard luggage stand has not changed in the last 50 years from what I can tell. So I feel like they were onto something. They got it right. It doesn't need improvisation by me. I think this is a great plan. So I am gonna head to the hardware store and pick up some wood so we can get started. Okay, so I am back from the store. I am actually really proud of myself for coming out of exotic woods with only the wood I needed for this project. I actually only ended up getting these two walnut dowels. And there's a reason for that. We've all heard of girl math and we've all heard of boy math, but have we considered maker math? What is maker math? Maker math is wanting to make yourself a cutting board, looking on Facebook Marketplace, finding someone who's selling walnut blanks, going there, knowing you only need about seven blanks, so you come home with 10. Even though you haven't even remotely begun to make your cutting board, you did at least pick the seven pieces that you're gonna need for your board, meaning that you have three pieces remaining. That, my friends, is maker math. So these are two inch by two inch by two foot blanks. You may have actually seen me pick up some lumber at Home Depot as well. And that is because walnut is beautiful, but pricey. And I've not made a wine rack like this before, so I think I should practice first. So our wine rack is actually gonna end up looking a lot like the inspiration picture, but that 12 bottle version seemed really intense. So this version, it holds six bottles, which seems a lot more manageable. I actually wanna glue two of these pieces together because while it is a nice width for that middle piece, it's actually not gonna be deep enough to hold the wine bottles. So I want to glue two pieces together and let them dry overnight. That way they'll be nice and sturdy when I get to work on constructing this wine rack tomorrow. Okay, I'm back from the hardware store and I'm just gonna get started building the frame. So I'm starting by taking two of my four feet pieces and marking them straight down the center. I'll be cutting them in half so I have four pieces that are 24 inches long. 
Then with my other two pieces, I'm marking those both at 28 inches and giving those a cut. Those will be the longer top pieces of my stand. I'm gonna be joining these all together with some pocket holes, so I'm using the pocket hole jig and making two holes in each one of my 24 inch pieces. To do this is super simple, just clamp the jig onto the end of your piece of wood and then use the drill that it comes with to drill two holes through the end. Now that I've done that to all four pieces, it's time to assemble. So starting with my first long top piece, I'm taking a pencil and just marking in about one and a half inches in from the end. This is where the legs will sit on this piece. Then all I need to do is add some wood glue and use the pocket hole screws to screw the pieces together. Then I have something that looks like this, kind of like a big U shape. Now the second half of the stand is almost the exact same with a slight difference. The legs need to sit a little farther in on this one. So I'm bringing in my second top piece laying it on top of the first one I did, and then marking a tick on the inside of the legs I just attached to the first piece. That is where the second set of legs need to go. Okay, so now I've got two pieces that look fairly similar, like so. And how this works is the larger piece that goes here and the one with the legs closer together is just gonna fit inside of it. And it's gonna hinge like this. So how do we get it to fold nicely like that and stay together? Well, to do that, I'm gonna be using a bolt and a nut on each end. So I have this threaded rod from the hardware store and this is what I'll be using to make my specialized bolts. Holding up to the two legs of the stand, I can see exactly how wide I need it to be. And I'm adding about an extra quarter inch on each end because I need some space for the nuts to screw onto. This rod is super easy to cut. We have this very basic hacksaw and it just takes a couple of saws to snap it right in half. The pro tip I've heard is to thread a nut on first so that after your cut, you can thread the nut off and that will straighten out any of the threads that may have got bent while you were cutting. Now we'll need a spot for that bolt to go. So about halfway down the legs, I'm taking a drill bit that's the size of that threaded rod and drilling right through all of the legs. The specific nuts I'm using are called acorn nuts, which is freaking adorable. I'm putting one onto one end, then pushing my rod through both legs and screwing another acorn nut onto the back. Do that on both sides and we now have a working folding base for our luggage stand. I've cut that wooden dowel I got from the hardware store into lengths that are the same width as both of the legs and I'm using an appropriate drill bit to drill part way through the legs so that dowel has the space to go. I'm inserting just a little bit of wood glue into the hole I made and then pushing that dowel into place on both sides. This is just gonna add extra support and stability to the entire piece. I think I'm gonna learn to crochet today. So, I wasn't able to find a puffer jacket to do the puffer jacket to vest idea, but my other idea was to do the embroidered knit vibe on a sweater. So I have my base sweater here in a pretty blue color, and I'm going to be crocheting little bows to add to it. So I went through a lot of different ideas here, like cherries or peaches or a word and I landed on bows just because I think they're kind of universal. They're having a moment right now. I think it'll be enough for me to take on as a beginner crocheter. As far as I know, I haven't really crocheted before. I remember doing something, let me know if you guys know, it's like a plastic tube that you would like wrap stuff on and then it would make like a tube. That's all I remember doing as a kid, but let's learn to crochet together. I think I'm gonna go on YouTube, classic. I think I'll just make a bunch and then we'll attach them to the sweater. We got this, guys. We got this, right? You will, of course, need a few tools. Grab the yarn that's so attached the to the board and wrap it around your finger. finger. Bring it forward to make an X. This is called yarn over. Oh! I made a thing. Wow, it is so interesting to see my brain try to figure out a new thing. And it's really hard to uh, get your hands used to where they need to be. And other than that, I feel like I just needed to do big stitches. I redid this like 10 times. So 10th time's the charm. An hour later, I have a 13 link crochet and a 21 link crochet. And this essentially is going to be the top of my bow and then the strings of my bow. 
They actually won't take their bow shape until I attach them to the sweater and that's what I'm gonna use this piece for is to do the little middle part. So I guess I'm just gonna make like 20. Let's start with 12 and see what happens from there. Uh, okay, also I'm just gonna link for you guys the tutorial that I'm following. I have not crocheted before, so this is definitely beginner friendly. I followed one tutorial to kind of get started and then another tutorial to actually make this bow. Okay, so I've only made about six sets. So what I have are a few 13 chains plus the back stitch and 21 chains plus the back stitch. Now I need to make these into bows and I think it's time to start putting them on the sweater just so I can see how they're looking. I have some wonky little scrap bows that I made just by tying yarn so that we can use them as placement. <laughs> Using the tail of the longer chain on a darning needle, I'm looping through the first stitch and then pulling tight to make a circle. Pinching the circle chain and the middle on the shorter chain, I placed in the desired position on my sweater. Then I took the needle that is still attached to the tail of the circle chain and then stitched the bow onto the sweater, going in and out around the middle about six to eight times. Then I'm tying off on the back side of the sweater. Okay, I'm actually loving this. It looks so cute. I ended up creating six bows and attaching them to the front and the sleeve of the sweater. Good morning. If you see that I'm already a little bit dusty, I have gotten into some quick woodworking. I unclamped our boards that had dried overnight. I cleaned them up a little bit at the planer, at the table saw, and at the miter saw, basically so that they would both have flat edges all the way around and all that glue squeeze out is gone. So what I think we're gonna do is figure out exactly how far off the wall I want it to be so that the dowels that stick out of it are going to hold the wine bottles up against the wall, essentially. Okay, so I did some testing. I cut a three quarter inch hole into this piece of wood and then I cut it right down the middle, so about three eighths from one side. And that allows the dowel to just sit in there supported like so. And that's the look I'm getting from the inspo pick, but I don't love how sort of unsupported and loose that feels. So rather than cutting it halfway through the hole, I actually cut it at half an inch and that allows the dowel to have to be kind of Oh God, <laughs> have to be pushed into the hole and it kind of holds itself without me holding it. So that's a little bit more secure and I can still get the dowel in and out relatively easily for gluing up. So I think this is now our template for what we need to do on our other boards. Okay, so I did a bunch of testing for installing the keyhole brackets on here. I'm fairly confident now, I just need to actually do Becky's version. I am now gonna take a Forstner bit and do a slot uh, just big enough for the screw head to go deeper than this. I'm gonna go about half of the head. Next, I'm cutting the dowels to size, adding the keyhole brackets, and gluing and screwing the dowels into their grooves on the middle support. So we are almost there. I think I just need to give it a sand to get rid of some of the pencil marks um, that I had done and to clean up the edges. And then I think I'm gonna put a coat of wax on it just to keep it looking a little bit more natural. Oh. 
All right, let's get into it. I wanna start by getting our Velcro onto this elastic band. I'm gonna start by cutting the length of our Velcro to the width of the elastic band. Now I'm just using a little no-sew hack to prevent our elastic from fraying. And that's just using a little bit of flame to lightly melt our raw edge. Now you could hand sew this, you could use a sewing machine, fabric glue. I am gonna go in with this stuff called Gem Tack because that is what we have. So the circumference of a Stanley cup is 12.5 inches, but to allow for the overlap of our Velcro, I'm gonna add an inch and a half, which is half an inch less than the width of the Velcro, just so that it holds tight. And I'm just repeating what we just did on the opposite side. Okay, strap is finished, super quick, super easy. It looks very clean. Now, most of these little pouch things are actually made very similarly. So a lot of them have this like strap that loops in the back. So this is where our elastic's gonna feed through, but we'll try that later when it's all dry. For now, I wanna try and utilize the strap that's here, but I don't think I could leave it on this little bag because it's just hugging. It will like wanna slide off with the weight of the mug. So, I think it would be awesome if we could just almost loop it around the handle of the cup. Maybe just like a carabiner. Okay, I just spent some time in the storage room looking for a carabiner because I thought we might have one. Unfortunately, we didn't, but luckily for me, Becky is also working in office today and she asked me what I was looking for and look what she found in her car. I mean, you can easily find these at the hardware store, but this just saved me a trip, so. Picture this. So, Rochelle, she's coming into the office. She's carrying a million bags. She wants her Stanley, we know that. With her adjustable strap, she's got a hands-free Stanley. Okay, so the final DIY for our personalized kit will be this necklace and bracelet that I found at the thrift store and make it into a nice little chain that can hang off. And I really think it's just gonna tie it all together. Okay, so I deconstructed our thrifted jewelry and now I'm just restringing those beads. Just playing around with the pattern and I like to use fishing line when making things like this because it's so much easier to pick up the beads, especially if they're small. And then to finish it off, I'm just tying it to a keychain ring and feeding those loose ends back into the beads for a clean look. And I love the way this turned out. Okay, I'm just about ready to wrap this gift for Rochelle. The last thing I wanna show you guys are the silicone caps that came in. I definitely have more than I think I'll give her, but maybe I'll do like one per glass straw and we have lots of glass straws at the office. These are definitely not the worst things to have around here. I don't know where my phone is. Okay, it's day two of working on my DIY luggage stand. I'm feeling really good about it. I just need to essentially stain it, but there's one thing I haven't figured out, and that is what I'm gonna do about the straps that need to go across the top. So I'm gonna head to the fabric store, see what they have, and then we can take it back to the office and finish this thing today. So 70s, I'm obsessed but I don't know what I would use it for, and this is not my project. <laughs> I'm gonna stain the pieces while they're disassembled. It will just be easier that way. And I'm using the Color Provincial. It's a classic. It's a favorite stain color of ours. A nice, neutral, yet warm brown. Now that all the sides are stained, I'm good to put it back together, which essentially just means putting that DIY bolt back in and screwing the caps on each end. Okay, so now we are on to doing the straps, which at the fabric store, I found this green color, and I just feel like green is Kelsey's color, and I can't go wrong with this. And this is the material that's kind of on tote bag handles, I would say, so I think it's going to be very durable. So I've cut five strips about 20 inches long, and I'm gonna be attaching them to the inside underneath of the stand so that the staples can be hidden as best as possible. I'm using some E6000, which is just a really strong glue. Putting a little bit of that down, then placing the end of my strap onto the bottom here of the wood, and then using a staple gun to staple that in place. And then I spaced each strap about three and a half inches apart. Once I was done with the one side, it was just a matter of pulling the straps across and doing the same glue and staple method to the other side, making sure that they were spaced the same distance apart so the straps would be straight. And for wrapping, I thought it would be nice to kind of do like a gift basket style. So I picked this up from the thrift store yesterday also, and now she... Reuse this later. Are you impressed? I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that all of the gifts are wrapped and ready, it's time for the gift exchange. Rachel, yes. I got you for Christmas. For Christmas. <laughs> okay, I'm really glad because I love whatever this is. A blanket? It's a blanket. It's also the wrapping, but it's also yours. Okay. What Can is it? Yeah. No movement. <laughs> Thanks. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wait. This is so cute. Kelsey. Yeah. I love it. It's so Rachel. Oh my god, it's so me. City Bo Peep realness, guys. <laughs> Let's That's go. Style. City Bo Peep. City Bo Peep. Oh my gosh, I love the color. Yeah. I love that you know this is my favorite shade of yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michelle, I've made you a gift. Oh my god, thank you. I love the wrapping. What the heck is this? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! It's for your Stanley. No freaking way. Yeah. And so now you can keep all your gadgets and your gizmos. Oh my god. Stop it. How did you know I liked purple? <laughs> Who would have knew? <laughs> Will you put that on? I will switch out the straw here. So wait, what's that straw? This is plastic. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Get her out. Blast. Get it out. Plastic. Hi. <laughs> And look at that, so you'll never get <laughs> dust in your straw, which is a concern. Exactly. Woodworking. Thank you so much. That is so, so thoughtful. Rochelle, you're never going to lose your AirPods ever again. <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have maybe gotten Becky. Ah! <laughs> Cute wrapping. I love the yeah. Sherpa. OK, what is it? Why Interesting bell? shape. Why don't I hear jingle bells? OK. <gasps> Rochelle! How did you know? Where did you buy this from, This is Michelle? so beautiful. <laughs> this is so stunning. Yeah, thank you. One, Literally two, three, from the store. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. So good. Professional quality. Seriously, store bought. And we'll learn how to make this from a video? I mean, I certainly shot enough footage. Sorry, editors. <laughs> wow. Well, I have you. For me. And this was a hard one to wrap. But hope you like it. looks it. a little hard to wrap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Rachel's gonna use me. Okay. Wow! Beautiful. beautiful. That You're is... gonna get so much use out of that. Oh yeah. For all your trips, making unpacking and packing so much easier. Yeah, it's be beautiful, Becky. Thank you. Good work. So nice. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you have any good last minute gift ideas, leave them down in the comments. See you next time. Bye guys. This is a special holiday themed episode and I'm feeling festive because today I want to try a bunch of budget friendly DIY tree ornaments and I am so excited to get started. Facebook Marketplace. I'm just saying. It's so cute. I actually really like this. I really am enjoying this a lot. <laughs>